Okay, everybody, welcome to Fisheries Management Aotearoa. Uh, the very first slide, the very first video, the very first class, and the very first question that goes along with the very first video and the very first slide is, why are you here? And so I assume that the answer for everybody for why you're here in this fisheries management class and this, um, and this course is because you are uh, interested in the ocean, you probably uh, love spending time on the ocean uh, in the marine environment. You're quite interested in the marine environment and would like to have a career or a job working in the marine environment. And so if you're going to uh, get a job or a career working in the marine environment, your job will be impacted by fisheries. There's no part of the ocean, no surface of the ocean, that isn't impacted by fishing gear, no population or community uh, that isn't impacted by people extracting resources from those uh, from that from that area. And um, so, if you think about perhaps going up and uh, just being a, uh, a dive instructor up at the Whit Sundays or something for a couple of years, or maybe for your whole life, that's great. Uh, but what's going to happen is that um, the your clients are going to come up and what they're going to see while they're diving is going to be impacted on by um, what's taken out by commercial and recreational and possibly customary fisheries in the area and um, a lot of them perhaps might be interested in uh, doing some fishing themselves cray hunting or or uh, scallop diving or or you name it uh, let's say that you want to um, do research and even if you want to research um, penguin populations in Antarctica, uh, krill are now being uh, uh, taken out, fished out in the uh, in the Antarctic waters, and so um, penguin populations are impacted by fisheries. If you're interested in working for Greenpeace, whaling is a fishery. Okay, if you're interested in um, uh, working for your local hapu or iwi if you're uh, iwi affiliated uh, there's going to be massive amount of uh, job opportunities for people um, who are able to uh, help take control and uh, design uh, local fisheries management programs through matai tai and the like anyway so anything any um, job in the uh, marine environment is going to be impacted on by fisheries. So let's get into it. What is a fishery? Okay, well, brainstorm for a couple of moments. Hit pause. And now, if, um, if you thought about it, a fishery, if we're going to put a definition to it, uh, this is one definition could be defined as human harvest of wild marine resources for food or industry. So of course we're thinking about things like big tuna fish and other um, uh, other large fish. That's the first thing you think of when you uh, go fishing, perhaps snapper, uh, perhaps if you're from down south, blue cod. But it might not be other things, it might not just be fish, it could be things like squid, it could be crayfish hunting, whales, whales are a fishery. Um, that is uh, uh, that is uh, something that is called a scientific fishery now, but it is a fishery. Could be turtles. It used to be turtles in great quantities for um, uh, meat and shell, and it might be algae. It might be um, the people who are taking um, uh, algae to dry out and shred up and roll up your sushi. So uh, there are lots of different resources. Um, if we think about a local example here in Taranga, there's some uh, a case going through the courts right now, and uh, it has to do with dredging the harbor in order to make a passage, a deeper passage for uh, bigger boats to come into Taranga Harbor. And the interesting thing about it is that sand, taking sand um, is taking a marine resource. Now, whether that's considered mining or fishing, uh, is open uh, for debate and is uh, being contended in court right now. Okay, when we think of fishing, we often think of big boats like this. 
uh, and places like this, which is a, an auction house for bluefin tuna in Japan. Okay, these have come from all over the world. And then, uh, but we also have to remember that things like uh, pawa diving or even just picking them up out of the shallows like this is a fishery. It's a recreational fishery, perhaps a customary fishery, um, but it is a fishery. And then we've got things like subsistence fisheries, where these guys are actually um, taking uh, fish with these bags that they've got in nets here in order to be able to um, feed their families, but also uh, have a little bit extra to sell for uh, buying a, uh, a little bit of rice or perhaps a karaoke machine. And um, so that is uh, considered... It's a it's a it's a tough one whether that's commercial fishing or non-commercial fishing, but that is a uh, so called a subsistence fishery, and then here we have a fishery that's probably not for food as most of these marlin are tagged and released. It's really a recreational fishery, high dollar and uh, just for fun. As is this one, uh, okay? This sturgeon will not be um, captured and taken out of the water. This is a north. Uh, eastern United States river fishery where people um, catch these fish that weigh up to about 1,200 pounds, 450 kilos or so, and they take these, they just try to reel them in uh, from river banks or from boats and then um, let them release them. So it's just a sport fishery. Okay. So here's a definition of what fisheries management is. And this definition, if we think about it through the rest of the course, is going to um, uh, be our guiding principle. And uh, if you look at all of the words in red, now we've got, um, in order to understand this definition, we're going to have to come up with a de definition for each of these words in red. And this is a fisheries management, this is a fisheries specific definition. And so we're going to spe spend a good portion of the rest of the year, or the rest of this course, talking about the definitions for control and how to go about controlling uh, fishing, what a stock is, okay, what is fishing, what's, uh, what does sustainable mean, and then looking at recreational, commercial, and traditional activities. So controlling the quantity of a stock caught through the human objective of fishing to obtain the largest sub sustainable catch through recreational, commercial, or traditional activities. We want to, as fisheries manager, um, produce a healthy fishery that can last. So what's a stock? Go ahead and hit pause and brainstorm about this for a minute. What is a stock? A stock is a supply accumulated for future use, a store, that's one definition. Could be all the animals kept or raised on a farm. Okay. Could be is a more complicated one. A stock describes characteristics of semi-discrete groups of fish with some definable attributes which are of interest to fishery managers. Okay. Or how about even a more complicated one? Subpopulations of a particular species for which intrinsic parameters, growth group, blah 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 blah. blah, blah. Okay. These this is a uh, a better definition, but a little more complicated, more complicated than what we need. And so a stock really can just be called a uh, a group of interbreeding fish in an area. A group of interbreeding fish in an area would be a stock. Okay. What does sustainable mean? We'll talk more about stocks later. Sustainable. Okay, so take a minute to hit pause and brainstorm what you think sustainable means. Okay, here's a nice picture taken from a, um, a commercial fishing uh, trawler, and they've dumped the, uh, the cod end, the bag contents, onto the deck, and then it goes down into this uh, hole in the deck, down into the factory, which you can see opening up. And right here we have what would probably be a, a broadbill or perhaps a, a large shark. But um, the cap... the uh, uh, target species is probably hokey, but then you see loads of other species in there. And if you take uh, a whole lot of species that you don't intend to, and you impact that, that could be considered non-sustainable, even if the the uh, 
fishery that you are taking from is a healthy population. Okay. But anyway, a definition of sustainable would be capable of being continued with minimal long-term effects on the environment. Okay, Minimal long-term effects on the environment. When you talk about sustainability, you really need to talk about, um, uh, you can't really talk about short-term effects um, if you want to uh, truly talk about uh, if you want to truly plan for sustainability, you need to plan for long term. Okay, um, this is something that's bycatch. Uh, this uh, sustainability includes non-target species, like we were talking about before. This is a whale that's been t caught up in a in a uh, gill net. And here we go. This is um, a uh, picture taken by national from the National Geographic. And this is uh, a whole lot of things being thrown back uh, from up here. We see a little snapper, a little guitar fish. Um, there'll be flounders and flukes and uh, lots of different kinds of fish. There'll be little crabs and things. Uh, and so this is from a shrimp bycatch. And uh, sometimes with shrimp, you can have as much as 800% of returned stuff, non-target species, which are just chucked back dead. Okay, here's a nice WWF, World Wildlife Fund, uh, advertisement. And so this is what they're talking about with tuna. Perhaps you might, dolphins, sharks, turtles, a uh, little bit of tuna, seabirds all caught in that, in that long line tuna fishing industry. Okay. Although I doubt that it would be very rare that a dolphin would be caught in a, uh, in a long line fishery. Okay, so we'll stop right there. Think about how you control fishing. We'll stop right there because we need to keep these videos short, and we'll see you in the next one.